and every one of us to become sons of God. And uh, the Bible is one amazing, you know, story and journey of um, people, uh, you know, um, renouncing their birthright and um, coming under a, another another uh, spirit rather than the spirit of the Lord. And uh, Esau is, is uh, an example which we can read about in Gen Genesis 25. You know, I, mean, I might have to find my Bible. <laughs> got my Bible here. It's, uh, you know, yeah. um, but um, all right. So I'm like, just give us a few minutes. I'm going to go and get my Bible. It's not here in front of me. I must have left it down in the house. But uh, I haven't got a whole teaching together as such on this yet. I just wanted to touch on a few scriptures and discuss this because uh, this Esau curse uh, is, is what is behind the tares and the wheat in the parable of the tares and the wheat where, you know, the Lord tell, told, told um, the, the, the harvesters to leave them and let them grow together because you can't, you can't discern between tares and wheat uh, before they actually bear fruit. So this uh, Edomite uh, curse, the Edomites were actually responsible for um, uh, really for the responsible for the destruction of Israel, you know, because they went along with, uh, they invited in the Romans they collaborated with the Romans and they betrayed God. Okay. So it's all about betrayal. It's very much like Judas. Uh, it's very much a part of the church. Uh, it, and it's here with us today. You don't think that this is something, it's not, it, this is not just a history lesson. It's um, really God showing us uh, what, a lot of um, what Israel fell into, really, because, um, you know, um, Abraham's descendants, Abraham's descendants, uh, just because you're a descendant of Abraham doesn't mean you have uh, inherited the promise. Because, as you know, Esau wasn't a descendant of Abraham, okay, but uh, he hated, okay, his birthright. And, uh, despised it and uh jacob was the one who uh, really in one one way coveted it and uh he 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 uh he he, he esteemed it with great value and that's something we we need to learn a lesson from and as we know uh uh esau edom edom actually means uh, red so we'll have a look at that but I've just got to get my bible so if somebody wants to uh, you want to put some worship on or somebody want to put a worship song on let's have a bit of worship and then we'll, Don't we'll have... we're live already okay yeah let's see Okay, so I'm going to go to Hebrews 25. Sorry, Genesis 25. And we're going to go down to 16 and 15. Genesis 25. Sorry, Genesis 25. Uh, Isaac's sons. Okay, now uh, Genesis 
Gotta go down here. All right. Okay, now Isaac said, now these are the records of the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebecca, Rebecca, the daughter of Bethuel and Aramean uh, of Paddan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was unable to conceive children and the Lord granted his prayer and Rebecca his wife conceived twins okay but the children struggled together within her kicking and shoving one another and she said if it is so that the Lord has heard our prayer why then am I this way so she went to inquire of the Lord praying for an answer. And the Lord said to her, the founders of two nations are in your womb and the separation of the two nations has begun in your body. The one people shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. Wow, isn't that just so awesome? You know, that really is a type and shadow. This is Esau and Jacob you know, wrestling in the womb together. This is sort of like um, uh, putting new wine with old wine in old wine skins. It's it's like uh, it's it's mixing. Um, we're trying to mix the law, okay, mixing legalism with with the new covenant, going under the old covenant and the new covenant. Uh, the two just don't mix. All right, and it's also. It's like, um, it's like um, the first shall be last. It's not like it is the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Okay, because as we know, um, uh, Esau came first and then Jacob. And uh, that's what it's like in, in, in the kingdom of God. Um, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. All right, so uh, when, okay, so verse 24, and when when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out reddish all over like a hairy garment, and they named him Esau, hairy. <laughs> Afterwards, his brother came out, and his hand grasped Esau's heel so that he was named Jacob, isn't that amazing, eh? Isn't that just so awesome? You can imagine, you know, Jacob, right when the time he was born, he was chasing after Esau's uh, um, blessing, you know, and um, um, position, I suppose, uh, as a firstborn. One, one who, so Jacob uh, means. Uh, Oh, so, so he was named Jacob, one who grabs by the heel, supplanter. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. All right, so this is the Amplified I'm reading out of. Uh, uh, 27, when the boys grew up, Esau was able, to, and skilled, uh, able and skilled hunter, a man of outdoors. But Jacob was a quiet and peaceful man living in tents. Now, Isaac loved and favoured Esau because he enjoyed eating his game, but Rebekah loved and favoured Jacob. Jacob had cooked red, reddish brown lentil stew one day when Esau came from the field and was famished, and Esau said to Jacob, please let me have a quick swallow of that red stuff there because I am exhausted and famished. For that reason, Esau was also called Edom, okay, which means red. And that's where this, uh, this word, the Edomites, come from, okay. So these Edomites are the descendants of Esau, all right. So Jacob answered, first sell me your birthright, the, first, the rights of a firstborn. Esau said, look, I am about to die if I do not eat soon. So what use is this birthright to me? You know, there you go, you see. Um, uh, Esau taking his, um, his sanctification, his, his, 
his salvation, his blessing for granted, his position, you know, his inheritance, really taking his inheritance. Um, that reminds me of Naboth, you know, how Naboth wouldn't sell his vineyard in uh, in First Kings to um, to ah uh, Ahab, and uh, Naboth said, God, "God forbid that I would sell, you know, my the vineyard, which is you know my inheritance. It's from my ancestors, you know." And this is what here with Esau we can see: Esau had no no um, value. He put no value on his his birthright upon his inheritance as and for really who he was so he was really a man of he's really a, a man of the flesh okay so he's very much um led by his flesh you know here here he is wanting food you know food is belly you know his god was his belly right so jacob said swear an oath to to me today uh yeah, so he said before that, he, verse 20, 32, I'll read again. Esau said, look, I am about to die if I do not eat soon. So what use is this birthright to me? Question mark. Jacob said, swear an oath to me today that you are selling it to me for, food, for this food. So he swore an oath to him and sold him his birthright. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew and he ate and drank and got up and went on his way in this way Esau scorned his birthright okay so this is um, a type and shadow of this curse all right people with this curse of Esau okay don't value their they don't value uh, their their inheritance they don't value God they don't value okay um, their their salvation all right particularly i think um christians as well in the new testament we can we've got uh people that are under this esau curse of esau okay uh we can see it in the church in in uh um in the apostate church of israel uh particularly when jesus came along uh the whole of the Jewish nation had fallen into apostasy, okay, and um, they were led a lot by uh, Edomites, all right, and uh, Herod was an Edomite, and the Edomites had actually been adopted into the Israeli nation, okay, uh, the Edomites were uh, allowed to become Jews at, I think it was, uh, just let me see here it was around about uh when was it it was about 150 bc somewhere around about that time i wrote it down somewhere here it goes hang on um, ah okay i got my notes on that one but um, one of the um, one of the Levites, one of the Levites, he actually allowed the Edomites to become okay Jews. All right, like he adopted them into the Jewish nation. So a lot of the problems that the Israelis had, all right, came through this um, this interbreeding of this curse into the nation of Israel. And uh, it's quite amazing if you do a bit of a study on that, what um, where these people like Herod um, came out of that. All right. And they what these Edomites did was they actually sold out Israel uh, to the Romans. OK, they allowed the Romans to come in and uh, take possession of the land. And uh, what. Uh, what I just wanted to do here was go to Romans 12. Okay. 
verse 15 and 17. Uh, Let, it says here, uh, just Hebrews, sorry, Romans. No, sorry, Hebrews, sorry. No. Hebrews 15. Okay. Um, all right, going down to... Uh, 14. Continually pursue peace with everyone and the sanctif sanct sanctification with which no one will ever, without which no one will ever see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of God's grace, that no root of resentment springs up, okay, and causes trouble, and by it many be defiled. And see to it that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, okay, who sold his own birthright for a single meal. For you know that later on when he wanted to regain title to his inheritance of the blessing, he was rejected for he found no opportunity for repentance. There was no way to repair what he had done, no chance to recall the choice he had made even though he sought it with bitter tears. Okay, so um, you know what? What I'm going to back up to verse twelve because this all ties in with our spiritual walk. Uh, this this is a this Edomite is a spiritual principality. Okay, and its job is all right to come into the church as the tares, all right, these are tares that are planted in amongst the wheat, all right, and they will, they, their job is, all right, to destroy, um, destroy people's faith, particularly people who are um, critical, uh, judgmental, and uh, under the law, okay, they, they, uh, they, try to pull down other Christians, all right, and they fail to to see, all right, that um, the plank basically sticking out of their own eye. This is what these Edomites will do. The Edomites are typically the, the Pharisee and the Sadducee type mentality that you will see in the church and also the cruelty um, when you look at Herod and, and uh, the Romans, the Romans are even um, like the Edomites, okay, in, in, in that time, all right, the Romans and the Herod were all collaborated together, all right, and they tried to destroy the seed of God, and that's what these tears do, all right, these tears are designed to strangle out, strangle the, the, the seed of God, the wheat, the, the good fruit, okay? So you've got, okay, uh, uh, Israel, like the, the, the fig tree, okay, or the, the, the children of God described in scripture as a fig tree, and you've got good and bad fruit, okay? So what, um, what Jesus did, as we know, was he cursed that fig tree, didn't he? Because that was, that was a sign that uh, Israel was going to be cut off, okay? Because what they effectively did, all right, was that they had um, they had um, despised really their their birthright, okay? Because they failed to mix their uh, their their walk with God with faith, and you know that's where it really comes down to love, isn't it? When you understand our our foundation in with God is all about love. It's about trust and it's about relationship. So, you know, when you, you when your religion becomes law-based, okay, and it becomes work-based, uh, it becomes independent, like independence, okay, we really are falling into this, uh, this same model and the same character that Esau had, you know. 
Esau was obviously a guy who relied on the strength of his own hands, okay, and um, he was carnally minded. And uh, he just thought about his belly, basically. It was the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, really. And uh, um, so I'm just going to back up to verse 12 here in Hebrews, because it just gives us a little bit more of a context. So then, strengthen hands that are weak and knees that tremble. Cut through and make smooth, straight paths for your feet that are safe and go in the right direction so that the leg which is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather may be healed. Continually pursue peace with everyone. You see, this is what these Edomites don't do, right? Edomites don't, um, and you might be thinking, well, why is he talking about Edomites? Well, the Edomites were, okay, a part of, all right, uh, the, that Jewish nation, all right, especially when Jesus came in, all right. He, they had infiltrated the church and they had caused the church to become apostate, all right. And this is what this spirit does, okay. It brings apostasy into the church, all right. Um, and it so you, you, when you get Christians that are, um pulling down other christians and being judgmental okay you you <laughs> i'm telling you it, you're they're in they're in a dangerous place that spirit okay is is uh is um de designed to uh destroy the promised seed strangle out okay the wheat because that's what the tears are designed to do all right choke the wheat all right and that's what this spirit will do it'll choke you all right, people around you that uh, want to pull you down and criticize you, okay, and that are judgmental, all right? They want to choke out the promised seed. It's the same thing as Ishmael with Isaac. Ishmael persecuted Isaac because Ishmael wasn't born of the promise. She, he was born with Hagar, and uh, Isaac was born of the promise through Sarah, okay? Now, um the jews will say yeah well i'm the son i'm a son or a daughter of abraham well yeah well as we know abraham had two sons and uh one was of the promise and the other one was uh not of the promise okay and this is uh, a same similar situation here where we have jacob okay and esau all right and uh Esau giving up his inheritance and uh, as, the, as the firstborn giving up his inheritance and um, then Jacob, all right, taking it um, because he valued it. It was, a, it was a pearl of great price. You see, this is so important for us in our Christian walk when we understand that uh, there has to be separation, okay? With with Jacob and with Esau, there was separation, all right? Because what happened, uh, Esau persecuted and hated Jacob. So Jacob actually left. He separated himself from Esau. He got away from him and he got very blessed, okay? And, and when he returned, he got, he came back, okay? Uh, Esau was able to see how blessed he was all right and uh this is what what we need to do you see this this is all about separation okay we need to separate from from this type of but um but god will god will allow okay these people to um be with the with the uh the, the true fruit the good fruit so this is bad fruit uh with with good fruit okay god will tolerate it okay because at the end of the day uh he will come when he comes in for the harvest okay he will separate the tares from the wheat all right so it's very important for us to understand that this what this spirit does is it brings in apostasy these this edomite spirit is a spirit of compromise it's a spirit of the love of the world Okay, and it's also uh, walking in the flesh, 
all right? And it's really uh, all about ego, position, all right? And it's about pride. So uh, it says here, first 14 continually pursue peace with everyone well that's what that's not what these uh this uh edomite spirit does this edomite principality this curse of esau all right does not continually pursue peace or with everyone all right they're very um jealous because esau was jealous of jacob and they persecute all right the promised seed all right as we see with Ishmael and we see with um, Isaac okay uh, same same situation all right one one abiding in you see Ishmael abided in Mount Sinai up through Hagar and Isaac abided in spiritual Mount Zion through Sarah all right because Sarah was where the promise promise came through Abraham to Sarah not to Hagar all right so when abraham had sarah i mean when abraham had ishmael he was in the flesh all right and esau uh esau when he gave up his birthright he was also in the flesh he despised and he did not take uh um uh, value in in his his position all right so when, when we take god for granted we really um are enticed by the world okay this spirit is uh this spirit will try to draw us away okay and uh the bible here in verse 12 says so then strengthen uh sorry continually pursue peace with everyone and the sanctif and sanctif and the sanctification which no one will ever without sorry without which no one will ever see the lord you see this word sanctification actually means okay separation all right to separate and you can see this with esau and with jacob all right they <laughs> they didn't get on did they even in in rebecca's womb there was a clash okay and this is sort of like um with uh sin and uh with holiness there's going to be a clash all right you know the heart the the sin will will try always it to try to um defile okay the holy and what the holy have to do is separate themselves okay from from the defiled and this is what is behind this esau and jacob story here we see sanctification through jacob with jacob by separating he separated himself uh from esau and uh because you know he was he actually feared for him as his life because you know esau was going to try and kill him murder him so uh he actually separated himself and he got blessed all right so um it says here verse 16 and see to it that no one is immoral or godless like esau who sold his own birthright for a single meal all right so i want to go from there to first corinthians 10 verse 11. i'm just touching on this subject i've just uh what i haven't done a pr proper teaching i'm just going through some notes that i made uh last night on this so i'll come back next week we'll do a proper teaching on it uh because this is something the lord showed me as a massive principality in deliverance so i haven't even touched on this really with the edomite spirit uh because the lord even showed me with this edomite spirit uh you know how jesus was on the cross and it says the bulls of basham have surrounded me all right well these this these bulls of basham all right were all connected to this um e edomite spirit okay this edomite prince they were edomites all right gnashing their teeth at the lord i mean these were the people like herod and um 
the the Romans that had tried to destroy and kill and put down anything that God tried to um, to to bring forth. All right, the fruit of God. Okay, Jesus was sent to the lost house of the sheep, the lost house, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, what do you what does that mean? All right, obviously, you know, people think about that. Well, there were okay god wasn't sent to the whole house like god didn't plan on taking the whole house he wanted to but there was select people that god pulled out he actually pulled out selected people out of the house of israel is where he where that is what he came to and uh, they were the peace the true jews the true ones that hadn't been defiled and uh, hadn't been um, contaminated by uh, this spirit which had uh, Israel had allowed in, they they allowed this Edomite spirit to come into the Jewish nation and corrupt it, okay, and made Israel apostate, uh, all right, through their unbelief, okay, because they didn't mix the law with faith, all right, and they basically, like the Jesus, rebuked the Pharisees and told them, you know that they were you know whitewashed tombs filthy on the inside but on the outside they looked you know like uh, like whitewashed tombs so and they desired the the best seats and they basically turned a proselyte into twice the son of hell which is saying they not only stopped people you see these these edomites not only stop people from entering the kingdom of heaven because they're in the church all right they're in that apostate church of that time i'm not talking about the church of today i'm just talking right now about the church uh, of israel okay before christ it was apostate and it had allowed this uh these tears to come in and can and strangle and try and strangle out the wheat and jesus was sent to the lost sheep of the house of israel all right so you know um, obviously he was sent in okay as a lamb amongst wolves and that's what these Edomites are they're wolves in amongst the sheep and what they'll do is they'll try to uh, they'll try to strangle and destroy the promised seed of God it's like Haman the spirit of Haman Haman uh, in the book of Esther is a principality spirit and its assignment is it's a principality its assignment is destruction of God's anointed. All right. And this is uh, what's the uh, same sort of thing we see here. Okay. With this Edomite principality. So 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11. Okay. All right. Now it says, now these things happen to them as an example and warning to us okay they were written for our instruction to admonish to equip us upon whom the ends of the ages have come therefore let no let one who thinks he stands firm immune to temptation being overconfident and self-righteous take care that he does not fall into sin and condemnation no temptation regardless of its source has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to who human experience nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance but god is faithful to his word he he is compassionate and trustworthy and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist but along with the temptation he has in the past and now and will always provide the way out as well so that you will be able to endure it without yielding and you will overcome temptation with joy all right so um and then we'll go to romans romans uh eight romans eight verse 13 hang on Okay, so Esau was led by the flesh. These Edomites, 
you know, if you go under the law, uh, all right, you're going you're gonna to be walking in the flesh because it's impossible for you to walk in the law and the spirit at the same time. All right, now Edomites will typically become legalistic and walk. Oh, yeah, they walk in the, the letter. They walk by the letter, okay, because they're self-focused, all right? They're all about position, power, prestige, all right, and reputation, all right? They, they I mean, if you just want to have a look at those Edomites, uh, particularly, uh, they are literally uh, a murderous generation, I'm telling you, and, and we're not talking about physical here. We're talking about a spiritually murderous generation all right um god god hate, hate he said uh jacob i have loved but esau i have hated you know he's a reason for that you know it's because all right this this curse of esau will lead you to to death all right because it's it's very much led by the flesh all right so let's have a look at romans 8 verse 13 okay uh, for if you are living according to the impulses of the flesh, you are going to die. But if you are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death the sinful deeds of the body. You know, this is so good. I mean, this is the amplified version. I mean, the amplified version really does in, in, in a lot of areas just spell it out. Um, it's, it's so good. But if you, I'll read that again, but if you are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are, you are habitually. Now, look at that, habitually. I mean, that, it just becomes a habit. You don't even have to think about it. This is what is so awesome about being led by the Spirit. Um, and Edomites don't have this, all right? Edomites are, you know what Edomites do? They, they, um, they covet. And they are actually jealous of people that actually carry the anointing. All right. How many times have you been in church and had people constantly persecuting you uh, because they don't understand? All right. They're, they're envious of your peace. They're envious of the fruit of the spirit that you walk in, in Christ. All right. This is, uh, this is just the nature of Edomite. Christians, all right, Edomite Christians, all right, are very much uh, reliant upon worldliness, okay, and their own strength and their own carnal minds, all right, and they tend to persecute, and they definitely persecute, all right, the God's chosen, the same way uh, Ishmael persecuted Isaac okay because you both have the same father they both had Abraham you look at Esau and Jacob both had the same father you look at um, Israel you know Israel apostate Israel these um, these apostate um, Christians as you want to call them that they were children of God Jews all right they persecuted um, like Saul and David what did Saul do Saul persecuted David it's the same thing all right, this uh, same spirit coming in and um, persecuting all the time God's anointed. All right, it, it doesn't just work by itself. It works with other, other spirits. Okay, so let's go here to verse Romans 8, 13. Um, okay, so we're just saying here, if you're led by the, the flesh, you're going to die. But if you're led by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are continually and habitually putting to death the sinful deeds of the body. How awesome is that? That is the awesome good news of the, 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 the new covenant, all right, about being led by the Spirit. Holy Spirit is what sanctifies you. Holy Spirit is what um, overcomes sin. Holy Spirit, okay, is what cleanses you, all right, guides you, leads you, heals you, delivers you, all right? I mean it's just this is the good news okay uh it says you will really live forever all right for all who are allowing themselves to be led by the spirit of god are sons of god 
for you have not received the spirit of slavery, leaving again to fear of God's judgment. Okay, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, the spirit producing sonship by which we cry about a father. All right, so this um, this uh, Edomite spirit, all right, hates, okay, hates this, all right. I'm going to go right now to, uh, okay, hang on a minute, Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Sorry, I'll go to Matthew 18 quickly. Because then I want to go to Romans 9. Okay, it's Matthew 18. I mean, I've just taken some quick notes this morning on this. 34. Matthew. 18, hang on, 34, okay, uh, all right, so, you know, with Edomites, okay, Edomites are classic, this is a classic example to Edomites, all right, they, they are people that are literally God hands over to the tormentors, all right, because they generally have unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment. And we can see here, let's just read here. And in the wrath, and in wrath, his master turned him over to the torturers, jails, until he had paid all that he owed. My heavenly father will also do the same to every one of you if each of you does not forgive his brother from his heart all right so uh one of the things about christians that are always suffering from torment all right is unforgiveness it's jealousy um a lot of christians they get into this power thing where they they want to get um they want to get position all right, and it becomes t all about reputation, ego, pride, uh, and it all becomes about your name, you know, your ministry. And uh, this is this is where God says, "The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So, you know, anyone in ministry uh, must has to understand that we need to empty ourselves of empty ourselves of ourselves and when we actually empty ourselves of ourselves in our ministry okay ultimately it's god that will raise you up all right so first you have to make yourself okay um you've got to make yourself okay of no reputation and then god will lift you up as as the father did to jesus jesus made himself from no reputation we also okay our our position is not a position in this world okay our position is a position of the spirit in christ okay so the things of this world are foolishness to uh the edomite okay the edomite mind all right will not value okay and see the pearl of great price in the field of being one of um humility okay and poor of spirit all right so poor of spirit as we read uh was making yourself of no reputation didn't we so uh, and uh such is the kingdom of god uh so i'm just going to go right now to romans 9 This is how organized I was, you see. Had everything written down. <laughs> Verse 11 to 13. That doesn't look like Romans, hang on. Here we go. 
Okay. All right. So we see here, okay, in, we'll just back it up a bit. Uh, all right, I'm going to go right up to verse 6. However, it is, it is not as though God's word had failed, come to nothing, but not all who are descendants from Israel, Jacob, are uh, the true Israel. Now, isn't that amazing? That's what, that's what we're saying, okay? All right, Abraham, all right, had two sons, okay? Verse 7, and they are not all children of Abraham because they are, uh, his descendants by blood okay so it's not about being your birthright all right being you know you entering the kingdom of heaven just because say you're a jew all right uh but the promise was all right your descendants will be named through isaac all right so you know the, the descendants didn't come through ishmael they came through Isaac, all right? And then then through Abraham, though, though Abraham had two sons, that is, it is not the children of the body, Abraham's natural descendants who are God's children, but is the children of the promise who are counted as Abraham's true descendants. For this is what the promise said. About this time next year, I will come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only that, but this too, Rebecca conceived two sons by one man under the same circumstances by our father Isaac. And th though the twins were not yet born, they had done, they had not done anything either good or bad so that God's promise, his, cho his choice, his election would stand not because of works done by either child, but because of the plan of him who calls them. It was said to her, the older Esau will serve the younger Jacob. Wow. And it is written forever and remains written, Jacob I loved chose protected blessed but esau i hated held in disregard compared to jacob uh all right so then it just goes on to say you know what paul sort of argues about it a little bit uh you know well he doesn't argue but he he justifies it uh because it might seem unfair uh but god has mercy on on and compassion on on whom he has compassion all right but God in his wisdom knows, all right, he knew the heart of uh, Esau and he knew that he didn't have, um, you know, he didn't have the, um, he didn't have the heart like David had. You know, David had a heart for God and Saul, what, you know, let's take Saul and David, for example. Saul had a, um, a, a fear of the people and was uh, more interested in about himself his his own selfish ambition and david had his heart was after god and this is the same with jacob you see jacob's heart was after the blessing he he counted he counted the blessing of great price he counted his um his inheritance uh, of great value and worth and this is how we have to in christ understand okay god we've got to understand all right how awesome god is i mean when we don't elevate god and have revelation of his awesomeness and how amazing he is and how we are totally dependent upon god okay then we are going to put ourselves in a very dangerous place because we're going to become all right worldly and we're going to get tempted by the world we're going to become um susceptible to this edomite type spirit principality this curse of esau you know uh that can um we can allow to come in all right and steal our inheritance 
because that's what the spirit will do. It will st try to steal your inheritance. It will try to turn you into bad fruit. It'll try to cause you to being chopped off the vine because every branch that does not bear fruit, okay, is cut off, all right? And uh, that is Satan's assignment, all right, with this, with this spirit, okay? So I'm just gonna go to Hebrews. I've just wrote some scriptures down here. I'm just gonna go next to Hebrews 12. Verse seven. Hebrews 12, I see. <laughs> What's going on here? Verse 7. Okay, you must. Uh, all right. All right. One thing that uh, true Christians don't despise is correction. You know, one thing that God looks for in a man's heart is humility and to be able to correct them uh this edomite spirit doesn't like correction it uh it's haughty and proud all right now verse seven it says you must submit to correction for the purpose of discipline god is dealing with you as with sons for what son is there whom the father does not discipline now you are if you are exempt from correction and without discipline in which all God's children share, then you are illegitimate children and not sons at all. You see what this uh, spirit does, these Edomites, they don't like correction. They don't, they are actually illegitimate. All right. Because they've fallen from grace. All right. They're not, they're, they're trying to enter in through the gate through their own devices and not coming in through okay the 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 correct gate and that gate okay is jesus all right they're coming in through another gate all right because all right they have their own agenda all right they have a hatred for uh god particularly the real god because they are an antichrist they are antichrist in nature without realizing it and serve another Jesus, all right? Particularly this uh, spirit of Tammuz, all right? They they fall under into apostasy and they fall into false religion, all right? Because uh, God's children will also always receive correction. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to Second Peter. Verse 2. And we're going to go to verse 13. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, all right, but it says here, but these false, I'm going to go back up to 12, but these false teachers are, they're like unreasonably, unreason, unreasoning animals, mere creatures of instinct, born to be captured and destroyed, reveling things they do not understand, will also perish in their own corruption in which, in, in their destroying their they will be destroyed suffering wrong destined for punishment as the wages of wrong doing they count it a delight to revel in the daytime living luxuriously okay this is what um this is all to do with the flesh they are they are strains and blemishes on mankind reveling in their deceptions even as they feast with you they have eyes full of adultery constantly looking for sin enticing and luring away unstable souls having hearts trained in greed they are children of a curse all right abandoning the straight road that is the right way to live they have gone astray they have followed the way of the false teacher balaam the son of Bezalel. 
Beor, who loved the reward of wickedness, but he was rebuked for his own transgression. A mute donkey spoke with a man's voice and restrained the prophet's madness. Okay, uh, these, these false teachers are springs with, without water and mist driven by a tempest for whom is reserved gloom and blackness, black darkness for uttering arrogant words of vanity, pompous words disguised uh, to sound scholarly, scholarly, scholarly or profound, but meaning nothing and containing no spiritual truth. They beguile and lure use, using lustful desires by sensitivity, those who barely escape from the ones who live in error. They promise them liberty and they themselves are slaves to depravity. For by whatever anyone is defeated and uncombed that person, thing, philosophy or concept, he is continually enslaved. All right, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world by personal knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ, they again entangled in them are overcome, their last condition is worse for them than the first. All right, for it would have been better for them if they hadn't, they had not personally known the way of righteousness for they have known it. And then they have turned back from the holy commandment verbally handed on to them the thing that is spoken of the true proverb has happened to them. The dog returns to his own vomit and so is washed only to wallow again in the mire. All right. So this is what this, um, this um, spirit does, this Edomite spirit. It will lead you, okay, into, okay, self-abased, okay, captivity in the flesh. All right. It, it really is... Um, something which which disregards okay and doesn't put uh god first in in everything and and uh doesn't have a uh uh doesn't have a um love for god okay but a love for self all right it desires things of the flesh all right so i'm just gonna finish off here Hang on, i'll just go to second second corinthians six seventeen. now i'm going to go to isaiah 63 sorry hang on because i just want to close this off now isaiah 63 okay all right all right, so God's vengeance on the nations. Who is this who comes from Edom? All right, these are the Edomites, all right? With crimson stained garments from Bo Bozra Bo 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 in Edom. This one, the, the Messiah who is majestic in apparel, marching in his greatness of his might. I, it is I, the one who speaks in righteousness, proclaiming vindication mighty display why is your apparel red and your garments like the one who treads in a wine press i have trodden the wine trough alone and my and of my people there is no one with me i also trod them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath and their lifeblood is sprinkled on my garments and i st and i stained all my clothes um so all right these edomites all right uh all right are going to bring okay um destruction all right but this is jesus all right coming in and separating the tares from the wheat all right he's going to come in all right and separate the good fruit from the bad fruit all right i think it's in revelation it's revelation 19 isn't it uh revelation 19 i'm going to go there right now and you can see this in uh revelation 19 let's go there now where it talks revelation 19 verse 3 okay uh, revelation 3 
After these things, I heard something like a great and mighty shout of a vast multitude in heaven explaining, hallelujah, salvation and glory, splendor, majesty and power, dominion, might belong to our God because his judgments are true and righteous. He has judged, convicted and pronounced sent sentence on the great prostitute, idolatrous, who is corrupting and renewing, ru ruining and poisoning the earth with her idolatry and her adult adultery and idolatry and he has imposed the penalty for the blood of his bond servants on her and a second time said they said hallelujah smoke ascended forever and ever all right so uh, uh god is going to bring okay vengeance all right upon this he's treading out the wine press okay he's going to come in and there's going to be uh Later on, this it says that there's going to be uh, blood even sprinkled on his garment. All right, he's going to come in and slay. All right, and separate the tares from the wheat. All right, and um, this is what this Edomite spirit is is going to do. All right, is trying to. Um, all right, obviously send the church into apostasy okay so it's something which we'll we'll do i'm going to do a further study on it and um, i'll bring it next week as well because i'll just take these are just quick notes i've taken and i want to identify all right more about uh the nature of this spirit because uh it's something which the lord has brought up to me and he wants me to um expose all right this uh end time apostasy all right which is coming upon um which is going to come on the church especially like judas all right judas was another type all right he was in the church of god he was one of the disciples and he was a tear okay in amongst the wheat all right and the uh, i mean the 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 pharisees were tears in amongst the wheat and don't think that um, the tears have gone away, all right? The, the tent, the tears are there to strangle, strangle us, all right? To try and strangle us, but God will protect us, all right? By his spirit. So I'll just close with that. Amen. Does anyone have anything they want to add to that um, uh, revelation on Esau and the Edomites? Is it possible that he's that that in Revelation? What is it? Three? When he talk when they talk about the um, the Church of Satan. That, when they say the Jews, who say they are Jews but are not and are liars, could they be talking about them? Yeah, yeah, that's right. The synagogue of Satan, you mean? Yeah, Revelation yeah. 3 7. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, there's a whole page of notes I've left down at the house on, on this. I'm going to have to grab them. But there's um, evidence that I got during. 150 BC, a certain 
uh, Levi. He was a Levi. He was one of the high priests. He was the high priest. And he got, uh, he wasn't, he allowed the Edomites to come in to Israel. Uh, he adopted them into Israel, the whole rate, the Edomites to become Jews. All right. So the Edomites became Jews and then they, all right, their Herod's lineage, all right, came from the Edomites. All right. And there's a whole pile of them. They were, they, um, they really, what they did was they betrayed Israel and they collaborated with the Romans and they allowed Rome to actually break up the whole of the Israel, take possession basically of Israel, you know, and uh, they sold, they sold out to Israel. I mean, sold out to the Romans. The Edomites did it. Okay. So, hey, Pete, did you go through Obadiah? Yeah, no, I haven't. I, they're on my other notes in the house. I, <laughs> I suddenly realized I didn't have half my notes. So, You want to go get them? I'll read a little bit of uh, from Obadiah. Okay. Let me find it here. It's Obadiah 1, 10 through 18. Yeah. I, I, I preached that, that whole message. I preached right out of the spirit. Honestly, I, I hadn't done any preparation for that. I just went in and grab scripture so it might have sounded a little bit vague in certain areas because i was really i got scriptures written down here i didn't even know what they were about. <laughs> so, hang on a minute i'll just go down and grab my other notes all right i'll, I'll read obadiah here i'm trying to think of where to start um let me okay how about obadiah 1 6 how are the things of esau searched out how are, how are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid wound under tree. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, said the Lord, even destroy wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Taman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. And the day that thou shouldest stand on, uh, on the other side, and the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, the foreigners entered in his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even, even thou wast one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he had become a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people. And in the day of the, their calamity, Clamanity. I can't say that right. <laughs> Clamanity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked upon the affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Am I saying that right? Okay. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those those his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those that that did remain in the day of distress for the day of the Lord is near all near all the heathen as thou hast done it shall be done unto thee thy reward shall return upon thine own head for as for as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain so shall all the heathen drink continually yea they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them and they shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord hath spoken it. 
and they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they in the plain of uh, Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of the host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zephariah, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Shepard, shall possess the cities of the south. And Spira shall come up on the Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Amen? Amen. I just read all of Obadiah, Pete. So. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Because... Uh... So that's where there's a scripture there and it talks about God, the, the, them selling out Israel, selling out is the land of Israel to, um, I'm not sure who it is, but it was the Edomites, I think, that sold him, sold it out. And, uh, I can't find my notes. I've got the whole page of notes that uh, I have to, yeah. Oh, here we go. Well, what I got of, out of what yeah. I just read was yeah. basically, um, you know, don't stand in the way of the judgment. And, you know, the Lord's going to take out anybody even standing in the <laughs> in the way of them or by them, you know. Yeah, I've got it here. I just found my notes on. Uh, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, uh, let's Ezekiel thirty six verse five. You want to go there? Uh, Where are you at? Ezekiel thirty six verse five. Okay, I've got the uh, amplified version here. I might flick it through to the new. new of King course, James. I got the King James version. Yeah, well, that's good. But the the amplified does give a little bit more um, description of some things. Okay, Ezekiel thirty six. Verse five. Okay. Okay. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, surely I have spoken in my burning jealousy against the rest of the nations and against all Edom. Okay. Against all Edom who gave my land to themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and spiteful minds in order to plunder it's open country. Now I'm going to go to the uh, amplified version of that. Okay, let's read it from the amplified because it generally gives a look. Therefore, therefore, thus says the Lord God, my certain, my, oh, here we are. therefore, thus says the Lord God, most certainly in the fire of my jealousy, love for that which is mine i have spoken against the rest of the nations and against all eden you see the rest of the nations is talking about rome okay and all the the you know from the north and the people that have con conspired against uh israel and against all edom who appropriated my land for themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy. You see how the Romans took, uh, you see, it was the Edomites that uh, collaborated with the Romans, like Herod, and, I'll, and I'll, I've got some more written down here, I'll just bring them up, uh, which collaborated, who appropriated my land for themselves as a possession with wholehearted joy and with uttermost contempt so that they might empty it out and possess it as prey. Therefore prophesy concerning the land of Israel and say to the mountains and hills, to the ravines and to the valleys. Thus says the Lord God, God, I, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy. 
love for that which is mine and in my wrath because you have endured and shame, shamefully insulted. You have endured the shameful insults of the nations. Thus says the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand and sworn an oath that the nations shall that are around you will themselves endure their shameful insults. Uh, but you, O mountains of Israel, you put out your branches and bear your fruit to my people Israel, for they will soon come home. For behold, I am for you and I will turn to you in favor and you shall be cultivated and sown and I will multiply people on you and and all the house of Israel. Okay, so, all right. So what I wanted to do is just say here, all right, the Edom, I'm going to go to Psalm, Psalm 137. Now I found my notes. Uh, Psalm 137. Where's Psalms? Goodness me. Oh, this Bible doesn't have Psalms. It's in the Bible. Well, maybe somebody else wants to read it. What is it? Let's see if we can get a volunteer. Psalms 137, verse 7. Going once. Okay, I'm going to read it. Remember, O oh Lord, against the sons of Edom the day of the fall of Jerusalem and say down down with her to a very foundation you see this against the sons of Edom O daughter of Babylon you devastator how blessed will blessed will be the one who repays you with destruction as you have repaid us all right but it's saying here verse 7 remember O Lord Remember, O oh Lord, against the sons of Edom. You see, the sons of Edom, uh, the day of the fall of Jerusalem. These Edomites, man, they, they're, uh, they, I'm just going to read here. Edomites were forcibly converted into Juda Judaism by John Hyrcanus, Hel Hellenized Sadducean Levi, uh, not of Aaron okay high priest of the national leader of Israel 134 to 105 BC okay uh, Antipater the Antipater the Edomite okay after selling Israel to Rome Antipater usurped the Jewish throne for his Edomite Arab sons who started the murderous Edomite Herodian kingdom in Israel. All right. And that's what happened. I'm you, need, you need to read the book of Jude. <laughs> yeah, Jude. I've gotten I've Jude. About, you know, Obadiah, like Tracy brought up Jude. I've been getting led to a whole heap of Yeah, I've got here Jude, Jude 1 verse 12. Uh, well, you can only read the whole thing from, I mean, yeah. it's addressed Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James to them that are sanctified by God, the father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called that's written to the ones he's preserving. And then, um, would you want me to read it or? Yeah, yeah, read it. Yeah. All right. No, it's basic. You've got to read the whole chapter. Uh, but it's, it's just one book. Um, Love when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. There are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained unto this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance so you once knew this. As the Lord, having saved the people out of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the day of judgment of the great day. 
even at Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh to set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despising dominion and speak evil of dignity, dignity. Yet Michael the Archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these evil, these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally, as brute beasts, in those they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they've gone up the way of Cain, which was trying to make his own way, um, and ran greedy after the error of Balaam. And that was for hire and uh, perishing of Korah, which was trying to take over the headship of the God's people. Um, these are spots in your feast of charity, and they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about as wind, trees with trees fruit with it, withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars. To whom is reserved the blackest of darkness forever. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these. And there yeah, just it sort of just goes on like that. Uh, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust. The mouth speak of great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. It's all to do with the flesh, isn't it? But beloved, remember ye the words that were spoken before. Of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how bit they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up your souls in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. I'll just leave it there. So pretty yeah. much just everything you just said, didn't it? About, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. So this, uh, you know, while I was, while I was, um, you see, I, I, the Lord brought it to my attention during the week, and uh, when I was reading Romans nine, I think it was Romans nine. Is it not Romans nine or Romans ten, where it talks about Esau? Uh, I have uh, Jacob. I have loved, but Esau I've hated, and. It, talking about the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And then the Lord brought it to my attention that this spirit was, uh, it was a demonic principality. And um, uh, it was uh, something we needed to investigate with the deliverance. And he started giving me revelation of it, which I've just, a lot of the scriptures I've just written down, but I did a bit of research on it. Peter, yeah. Is this is this joining the church to the flesh? Is that basically what it is? So, Edom in the Catholic Church would be the homosexual movement. Yeah. Rick Warren with the five point peace plan is obviously his peace plan. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting very prosperity gospel with their planes and their mansions. That would be yeah. Edom. Rick Warren um um. Uh, which is um, Rick Joyner signing yeah. up with the Knights of Malta coming under the Catholic Church? That's it, the and Catholic Church. Spot yeah. on, Lauren. You, right. That's so anointed. What you're just saying is so anointed. The ecumenical movement that's um, basically taking us to the United Nations and the One World Order. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the the Rome, the Roman Catholic Church is all part of the Edomite thing, which was, um, and the United Nations, all part of the Edomite thing. And all those, when you were mentioning those, uh, Rick Warren and all them, the prosperity gospel, the whole thing, I was just getting so anointed. And uh, that's what it is. Uh, it's all, it's all, uh, it's all the, this Edomite spirit. You see, the Edomite spirit came into the Jewish nation. They were adopted. They were adopted, okay? The Edomites were forcibly converted into Judaism by John 
Hierarchanus. I'll, I'll just bring that up. I'll see if I can Google him because he was one of the Jewish like Sadducees. One of uh, one thing you said before, Peter, it's brought the remembrance to me. Um, you know how you said Herod was one of them, and um, yeah, I saw it. I saw a thing recently. Um, you know, when you go through the Bible, uh, it shows John. I think it shows John the Baptist. Um, you know, uh, bloodline right back to to where to David or something. I think it is. Oh yeah, and, wow! Uh, it shows. You know. Um, the high priest who was, I forget his name now, um, who was the high priest at the time? Um, doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. But mm. whoever the high priest was, he, he was displaced there by the Romans for convenience sake. And the real high priest was John mm. the Baptist. The real high priest um, was a John the Baptist. <laughs> doesn't that make sense? Oh, uh, was he? Really? Yeah, the real high priest was John the Baptist. That's why Jesus went to him to, to be baptized. Oh, wow. Yeah, because it shows, wow. it even shows John the Baptist's um, family line to, to show his hereditary, you know, his, his right to the, to the, you know, he was. Wow, the I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. You know, can I say something real quick, guys? This uh, This subject scares a lot of people. Just because, uh, you know, God says, Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. So when people hear that, they think, boy, God can hate? Why? You know, and I've heard a lot of people say, well, God might hate me like he did Esau. <laughs> what would you say to that? Mm. You just say, hmm. Start living in right standing with God. Mm. I Amen, would say. What, you know, what I was saying, you know, during the teaching was the thrust of it was, you know, during the week, God really anointed me so powerfully on, I think it was about Tuesday, uh, about his awesomeness. You know, we, you know, we all say, oh, God's awesome. God's awesome. And, you know, we think, oh, yeah, God's really awesome, isn't he? But when you get a revelation about God's awesomeness, about how he knows everything, like even every little thing about every cell and everything that's going on he knows everything that's going on and when you uh, you can't fathom his awesomeness you know and that this relates this is what really prompted me was esau didn't appreciate god's awesomeness eh? and you know he didn't understand how and appreciate god you know and that's with with us if we don't understand God's awesomeness and his entirety and his infinity and his majesty and his power and his glory, you know, when we, when we attribute everything to God, how awesome God is, then we're going to be like, you know, uh, appreciate him, God, and appreciate what we've got. Everything we've got is just God. Hey, eh? it's so awesome. And, uh, that's what the Lord was showing me with Esau. Esau didn't appreciate it at all. And this is what Christians do that wrestle with, you know, with doubt and unbelief and stuff like that. When you're wrestling with doubt and unbelief, you're really, what you're doing is you're, you're really, um, you know, not appreciating and believing God. Right. It's kind of a cop out if you ask me, you know. Uh, it's like what Reggie said. Reggie, say what you said again. He said it really, really fast. What do you say to people that are worried about being hated by God? Mm. Tell them to stop sinning. Mm. Start living their life pleasing to God. Don't be like Esau. Don't yeah. sell your inheritance for a morsel of meat. Mm. That's right. Amen. Yeah, he's got a point now. I think, you know, people that say, well, maybe God just hates me. I think the real answer there is that you don't love God. You know, if you feared God and you loved him, then, you you know, you wouldn't think that he hates you for a minute. God hates sin. So what does that tell you? How awesome was that where I read out they were both wrestling in the womb, eh? You know, they were fighting each other in the womb, eh? Can you <laughs> Interesting that they're called me. These two babe fetuses in the in the womb. Like, 
<laughs> right. It's well, interesting that in the King James, they're called two nations. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's right. They are. And that's what that's what it is to this day. You got these two nations. Where are they now? Steve, where are they now? Do you know? Well, you know, if you, if you do some reading, when you start looking up stuff according to uh, people, Jews who are rebelling against the other Jews, like like the, Tal the Talmud and stuff like that, the teachings of the Talmud, which are so much are fake, a lot of them say that they were totally hijacked, that Israel is, is really Edomites. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's what happened. The Israel was hijacked by Edomites in the... Uh... The uh, one hundred and thirty-four BC. Yeah, when T Titus went in and uh, besieged Jerusalem, they killed most of the the older Jews, and the children got sold off to Ethiopia, Egypt, and uh, places like that. And basically, the Edomites took over Israel. Yeah, that's right. And they they made they really brought uh, Israel into apostasy. And uh, that's why Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, okay, because he was pulling out his sheep out of the, the house of Israel. You know, the lost sheep, they were wandering around in a bunch of, uh, you know, ravenous wolves there, you know, like the bulls of Basham. The Lord showed me that the bulls of Basham, which I've come against that spirit, that's a demon, by the way, and it's a, it's all connected with uh, uh, the, Edom, the Edomites, but it's also connected with the Nephilim as well. It goes right back, that one, but I won't get into that. But that bulls of Basham, oh, they were come Edomites. On. <laughs> come on. <laughs> the, the, yeah, yeah come on. We want to hear it. <laughs> they, they were Edomites, all right? The Edomites had surrounded Jesus because they were the... Sadducees and all these people that had been put into power, okay, by um, you know the Herodian, the Her Edomite Herodian Empire, king kingdom, because the Her they, the Herodian kingdom didn't really you know um, like um, John the Baptist too much, did they? I mean, uh, they didn't like. Jesus, they didn't like any of they. Herod was the one that had a lot of them killed, didn't he? So you know, Herod really. I mean, Herod was struck down by God. There was uh, it's something which uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit more investigating and research on. Well, I think we should all do that. We should all, yeah, if you're interested, get in and do some homework on it because there's there's a big God. I'm telling you, God. Uh, it really wants us all uh, this to uh, this revelation of deliverance, particularly in deliverance, breaking this curse of the Edomites. So, Edomite, the Edomites are really people that call on the name of God, aren't they? And they're, yeah, they're, they are. They're, they're, they're not people of the world, they're people that actually. Um, they consider themselves God's people, aren't they? Yeah, they're they're in uh, they're in the church. It's a spirit that's in the church, yeah. and it's apostate. It's an apostate religious spirit that's in the church, and it's it's set up to um, it's set up by Satan to strangle the yeah. wheat. It's like I was saying, the Holy Spirit showing me the tares in amongst the wheat the tares in amongst the wheat are these edomite i mean i'm sure there's not just a lot of it's edomite the edomites strangling the, yeah. the true the, the cracks of um the cracks of esau to me is just um i mean it's pretty simple it's the idolatry of the flesh you know we, we've got to keep denying this and that and the next thing the holy spirit keeps bringing things up doesn't he that the idols in our life and well the um, other thing that i mentioned there was uh you know with the whole edomite thing was esau jacob separating himself from esau is separating ourselves yeah. from the flesh isn't it wow yeah and oh that's cool i like that 
apostate church too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You see, Esau, Esau was trying to murder, trying to kill Jacob. He wanted to kill Jacob, didn't he? Wow. You know, what would be a really cool would be a, a picture. <laughs> I can't help but to wonder what it would look like, uh, you know, when Jesus says the bulls of Basham are surrounding me. Dude, wouldn't that be an awesome picture? <laughs> that would be so cool. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Praise God. That, uh, man, that, that, that demon is one nasty demon. It's hey, like Peter, a... Peter, just, yeah. just a thought I had, too, about that. Um, I know we talked about it before about the uh, Catholic Church, and I believe her to be the uh, mother of all pilots. So, uh, you know, the spiritual harlotry going on um, throughout all the denominations and whatnot, like under the Counter Reformation, it's really been moving and gaining steam, as we know. And um, so, when uh, basically, as you explained, the spirit of Esau has married with the uh, the mother of harlots. Mm, yeah, definitely. Under, under the banner of the, the false light Lucifer, really, because that would be like a false trinity is how I see it. Yeah. And also the United Nations, you know, the whole United Nation thing is all about controlling Israel and, you know, trying to, um, you know, land grab, land right thing and all this up dividing up Israel, it's the United Nation, it's all part of this Edomite uh, thing. Yeah, the beast, the beast system, right? It's going to have a political arm and a um, military force, we know, that's for sure. But yeah, so we, we understand. I mean, I'm only learning this stuff, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just feeling my way around. I'm just asking, oh, thank you, Jesus, are these Brits leading us around here thank you lord uh yeah is it it's it's it sounds like what you were describing exactly before pete where they they came in and um just took over the israelites 100, 150 bc you know what you were describing there it's like yeah. a new world order now isn't it like what the pope's doing they're just wow. taking over god's people it's not god's wow. people doing it yeah yeah, it is, eh? It's like a, a, type, a type and shadow of the end times, isn't it? Yeah, it's, the it's things... exactly the same thing because we got nothing to do with, with what they're doing. They're just doing it. They're not even, I mean, they're just Satan worshippers, most of them. And um, mm. and there they are organising what, what so-called God's people are going to do. You know, it's ridiculous, isn't it? But that's what it is. It's the same thing as what happened in jesus time they set it up 150 years before they come apparently huh yeah it's what uh it's what these religious systems do eh? they're yeah. they're uh these religious systems that are edomite edomite principalities uh, cool. False Good religion. Good. having a form of godliness but denying the power and also you know uh having another jesus you know another jesus false glory false strange fire the whole the yeah. whole thing i'm telling you, i'm just sort of like when i got hold of this thing it was by the it's like i just sort of got it by the coattails and the holy spirit was just just every time i thought about it man i power of God just come over me and I'm just going wow what's God you know God's trying to show us something big here and I'm uh, just uh, encourage everyone here to do some homework and we can bring it all together and really understand it and do a, a teaching I'm still going to do the teaching on Leviathan I've just been really busy with work it's just I've got to work actually I'm going to go and do some work now in a minute I'm going to have to leave I've got a huge um, massive week this week ridiculous hey we're still live for about 15 minutes so uh i guess nobody else has any questions but if somebody has a principality or a spirit of edom you know what what does that mean how would somebody uh come against that just renounce it basically uh and come out of agreement with it and repent for the curse of esau and um 
repent for uh, really, um, really for disobeying the first commandment, which is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul, and ask for the blessing of and come into yeah agreement with the first commandment in the New Testament, which is love God with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul, and um, love others because what this Edomite spirit does. These are the Edomite spirits in people pull down other Christians, okay? It's something we all got to be careful of. When you start backbiting, oh, thank you, Lord, gossiping, uh, talking uh, against your brothers in Christ, you're basically doing what Esau did, all right, towards Jacob, all right, or Ishmael against Isaac or Saul against David. You know, it's it's uh, it's these uh, the characteristic is the children of the promise being persecuted by uh, religious people. Okay. So if you're being real critical of your brother or sister, that that could be a sign that you have this. Is that right? Yeah, I would definitely start repenting. <laughs> yeah, I'm repenting, all right. If you're starting uh, backbiting and pulling down other Christians, uh, whoever they are, I would be very careful of to be walking like, um, yeah, be changing that course quickly. And, uh, you know, because the whole thing about the first, because what the Lord showed me on, I think it was Wednesday, was the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Uh, when we empty ourselves of self, okay, God's able to then uh, put us where he wants to put us. But if we don't do that, then we're going to um, not, you know, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be last. But the, the last, we're going to put ourselves last then God will put us first. But if we put ourselves first, then we're going to end up last. You know what I mean? So you got it the wrong, you know, the world's way is the wrong way. So in order to be first in God's kingdom, you have to be last. And being last means doing what Jesus did and emptying himself of all reputation, humbling himself and sacrificing himself even to the cross. Okay, so it's making other people like, like one of the keys is, 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 is uh, esteeming others better than yourself. You know what I mean? Making you don't think yourself to be anything. And I don't with myself, I don't, I just think, well, you know, I, I'm learning, we're all learning, we're all, we're all growing. We don't, we only know a little tiny bit. God revelation is what we want we want and where does that come from that comes from the holy spirit it comes from god you can have knowledge knowledge will puff up but love will edify you so this revelation knowledge from the holy spirit will actually bear fruit but if you've got knowledge in pride and self-righteousness all that's going to produce is the works of the flesh that makes sense does that make sense yeah. Amen. So the key is what the Lord showed me the other week when we we're doing the Leviathan teaching was Matthew 5. Matthew 5. And that was uh, blessed are the poor in spirit. And if you look at the amplified version of the poor in spirit, it's very good because it says to, um, you know, empty yourself of self and make yourself of no reputation basically um, and make yourself last yeah be very humble and make yourself laugh don't think there's anything don't think yourself as being anything without god you know everything has to come from god in order for you to succeed in anything it has to come from god and everything you've got has come from god and everything you are is from God. As soon as you think of it being from yourself and your own self-effort, then you're walking in thin ice. You're walking in dangerous territory. So, so 
so that's dangerous territory, you know, and uh, it's uh, something a lot of people wrestle with, unfortunately. So we have to be very, very careful. We're walking in love. And walking in love is emptying yourself and uh, mm. not, not being wise in your own eyes. I had a guy, hey, I went, and during the week, I had a guy, I went to an art, an art class, and I had a guy manifest right next to me. He manifested, like, standing there in an art class, and I got my, I, I went there, and there wasn't a lot of space, so I had, I had to sort of pull one of the easels out, and he actually was standing right where I normally paint, you know, wherever I draw or paint, whatever, and I, and I, pulled my easel out and I put it right next to him and then I sort of looked and I thought oh I said have you got enough space there I was really concerned about him thinking have you got enough room there and he got all angry he started and manifesting and all and he went all red in the face and I looked at him I said I suddenly thought I thought he was joking at first I said I said are you getting I mean, you know I said you're getting angry and he and he and he started swearing and carrying on and I looked at him and I said, I said, look, I said, I'm just, I said, I'm just, I said, we're just here for a, have a good time, aren't we? <laughs> I said, I wouldn't take it too seriously. It, I mean, we're here to have fun, you know, it's all. And uh, yeah, he got really, and I finally, I just said to him, look, I said, um, it's okay, I'm going to move my easel. I said, you can have as much space as you like. So I just got my easel and went down the other end of the room and plonked it down and had a big smile on my face and thought, that's good. And I was part, because I couldn't handle his vibe, you know, like he was, there was this just dark energy coming off him. And I thought, wow, I said, I'm not, I can't draw like this and paint like this. You know, so, you know, it was like separating yourself from Esau. You see, sanctification is separation, separating yourself from sin. When, you, when you're sanctified, you're separating yourself from sin. And I looked at him and I thought, no, nah, I'm, I'm not going to be uh, bound with, uh, I didn't look at it like that with Esau but that's what it's like being Jacob being bound with Esau standing next to some guy that wants to kill you and uh, he, he got my back my art materials he got it up and he was going to throw it literally grabbed it and he was going to throw it and I said hey 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 don't have to do that hey <laughs> hey did you go give him a, a big hug uh, uh, <laughs> I, look he was not in the mood for a hug believe me you should have uh, sent Jimmy after him <laughs> Oh, look, I, I, I went, anyway, I was, I was next to this this really nice girl and I thought, oh, it's a lot more pleasant down here. So <laughs> at this end of the room. And anyway, ha at the halftime break, he came up to me. He come, walked over and he apologized to me. He shook my hand and he said, look, sorry about that. <laughs> he said, I'm going through some, I'm going through a bit of a bad spell. I said, no, mate, I said, Oh, I said to him when he got angry, I said, I looked at him, I said, that's not the Ron I know. The Ron I know is really, he's a really nice guy. He's a top guy. And uh, anyway, I said, mate, it's all right. He said, that's okay. I said, look, I was, seriously, I was trying to help you. I really had no intention of trying to, you know, hustle you or anything, seriously. And he said, yeah, yeah, I know that. He said, I said, mate, anyway, I said, you're a really good bloke. In fact, you are, you're a really nice guy, Ron. And you know, shook his hand and gave him a hug. And that was good. Yeah. Sounds like he was pretty honest anyways. It was um, a spell he was going under, that's for sure. You know? Bad spell. Hey, Pete, I got to cut this live stream. Did you want to pray before I cut it? Mm. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, Father, we just thank you right now for this... Uh, this revelation with the Edomites, Lord, this principality and this teaching on Esau, Lord, we just want to, uh, we want to be that good fruit, Lord, that, uh, that you, you can only bring, Lord, the good fruit, Lord, we don't want to, Father God, try to, 
manufacture or produce any fruit in our own strength, Lord, but we want to know, Lord, that true sanctification, that true separation, Father, from sin is only through you, through the working of your spirit, through the work of the cross. And we thank you, Jesus, that you would just bring more revelation to us next week when we continue this study and we can put things together in a more concise teaching, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for, uh, for what you have given us lord your unleavened word lord in jesus name amen amen praise god yeah. mm.